Blessings, thanks to the Most High God. I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and you have joined in our continuing study in the Book of Revelation. This is a four-part course that's taken us the greater part of the year to get through. Uh, these time together right now are a little video synopsis of the classes, um, eight, nine, ten-minute synopsis uh, for folks who missed class and who want to catch up and do things like that. This week we were doing Lesson 7 of Revelation Part 2, and we're right in the middle of the uh, opening of the seals, the trumpets, and the bows. So very, very quickly, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who is found worthy, begins to open the seals to the scroll, the scroll being the day of the Lord, uh, the wrath, the vengeance, the ju judgment of the Lord God. And so we looked at that in previous times, so I would encourage you to look at that. Uh, because of lack of time, I'm just going to have to jump into the lesson today. We're up to the fifth trumpet, okay, the fifth trumpet, which is called uh, the first woe. The seven seals are broken. At the opening of the seventh seals, the seventh seal, the trumpets come into line, okay? And these happen sequentially, the first trumpet, second trumpet, third trumpet, fourth trumpet. And at the fifth trumpet, an angel was given a trumpet, and the fifth trumpet is blown. And it says that a star, and more than likely it refers to an angel, and we had a great discussion and reached no conclusion yet as to whether this is a good angel or a bad angel. But a star had fallen from the heavens to the earth, and he's given a key to the bottomless pit. He opens it, and smoke comes out and darkens the sun and the air. And locusts come out of the smoke. And boy, these locusts are really curious creatures, okay? They don't harm the earth, only men. As a matter of fact, they're told not to eat any of the grass, which is what locusts normally do, but only to torment men. And this is a curious thing because they only hurt those that don't have the seal of God on their foreheads. So those that dwell upon the earth <clears throat> will be tormented. For five months, they will be tormented. Another curious thing about this is that apparently during this five-month period, that no one will die. No one's going to die. They'll just be tormented. Um, these locusts have a king. Uh, the Hebrew name is Abaddon, which means destruction. The Greek name is Apion, which means destroyer. And so the king is one who destroys, and yet he doesn't destroy here. He just torments, okay? At the end of this, it says the first woe is past. And then you see an angel blowing the trumpet, the sixth trumpet, and this is uh, the second woe. And here the four angels are bound at the Euphrates River, who are bound at the Euphrates River, are released to kill a third of mankind. So previously we've seen that there's a possibility that a quarter of mankind may have been killed. That quarter may also refer to a geographical region that someone's given authority over that. And they do kill, but we're not certain exactly how many they kill. Here it says that a third of mankind are killed. In the previous thing, nobody died for five months, okay? But with this trumpet, with the second woe, a third of mankind dies. And these four angels were prepared for a specific hour, day, month, and year. The bottom line is this. God is in control. Plagues are brought forth, uh, plagues of fire, smoke, and brimstone uh, from an army of 200 million. And yet, those who dwell on the earth do not repent. Now, you have a bit of, uh, not a break, we'll, we'll call it that for lack of a better term, prior to the opening of the seventh trumpet. Prior to the opening of the seventh trumpet, we see in Scripture that several things happen. John has an encounter with an angel who gives him a little book and tells him to eat of that. It'll taste sweet in his mouth, but bitter in his stomach. John hears seven peals of thunder, and he starts to write down what they say. And he hears a voice saying, no, don't write it down. John is also told to measure the temple, and so he does. We also see the two witnesses. We've covered a good bit about them in a, a previous time together. But these two witnesses were prophesied for 1,260 days. Uh, probably no rain during this time. Fire will come out of their mouth to consume people that come against them. Uh, they'll strike plagues, but eventually they're killed because at the end of their time, at the end of their time, the enemy kills them. But then they're resurrected, and all the world just stands in awe. When they're resurrected, a great earthquake occurs in the city, and the tenth of the great city falls. And this is the city of Jerusalem. It's said mystically called Sodom and Egypt, but where their Savior was crucified. So it has to be Jerusalem, okay? And 7,000 were killed. The rest of the people in this city, in Jerusalem, glorified God. Now we get to the seventh trumpet after a few chapters in Revelation. And with the seventh trumpet is the third woe. And at this time, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of God and his Christ. This is where the Lord God literally takes over his domain, the king's domain. And you see worship in and out of all these things. It's just amazing. I really encourage you to read the scripture, read Revelation over and over, and watch how worship just breaks out. The 24 elders of worship, 
When God has taken his great power and begun to rule, the nations are enraged and God's wrath comes forth. Okay, uh, Revelation 11, 18 tells us that this is the time uh, for the dead to be judged and, and God's bond service. All this stuff is about to break forth. Okay, The seventh trumpet precipitates the seven bowls. Okay, the seven bowls that are poured out. Uh, you can't say that the seven bowls are the wrath of God, though everything leading up to this is the wrath, is the vengeance of God. And I don't like to delineate real hard lines on this, but the first bowl, here's what happens. It's poured forth and there's sores on people who've taken the mark of the beast and worshiped the image. There is a parallel between the bowls and between the trumpets, okay? With trumpets, with the first trumpet, you see something happening, but it only happens upon the third of the earth. With the second trumpet, it only happens on the third of the sea, that type of thing. Here is totality, okay? So there's sores on all the people. With the second bowl, the sea becomes blood. Not just a third as with the trumpets, but all the sea. With the third bowl being poured out, the rivers and the waters become blood. With the fourth bowl, the sun scorches men with fire, and yet men still do not repent. With the fifth bowl, there's darkness on the beast kingdom, and man blasphemes the God of heaven, and yet they don't repent. And that's an intriguing thing because they know that this is God. We've already saw that with the opening of the sixth seal. They were saying, who is going to spare us from the wrath of God, and yet they do not repent. With the sixth bowl, the Euphrates is dried up, and the three spirits of demons gather together kings of the world for a war that's about to break forth. And then with the seventh bowl, one of the most encouraging words in all the scripture, it says this, it is done. It is done. The mystery of what God is up to, what's been happening here, it is done. There's lightning and sounds and thunder, the greatest earthquake of all. The city splits into three parts, and the cities of the nations fall, and every island and every mountain goes away. I think we're going to learn a lot more about this down the road, okay? And 100-pound hailstones fall. You see that God, I believe, is literally purging and purifying and laying the foundation for what is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. The bottom line for us today is this, to really give God praise, okay, to stand in awe of what he has done in our life, what he is going to do. And this should really, really motivate us to speak forth the word of truth to people. I really believe that one of the greatest evangelistic tools of the last days where we are today will be answering people's questions related to what is going on. People are asking all the time what we think about things, what has happened. And we're able to sit there and give them some insight as to what's happening in the news today, but also to speak to them that now is the time to get right with God. Again, I'm Dale from the Precept Classes in Cleveland, Alabama. I thank you for being with us and we'll see you again next week.